All right, today we're going to talk about the truth about paramagnetic soil. And we got to get into this whole discussion, what does this mean? It means that you have available cations with a high paramagnetic value, and you also have a good amount of oxygen in the soil, you have a good amount of humus production. So basically you have a biodynamic medium. And so what does this mean? It means the bacteria are constantly cycling your soil and producing new ingredients. Now, this is where organic farming will oftentimes produce more paramagnetic soil than your inorganic basic salt-based fertilizers, because salt-based fertilizer kills bacteria in the soil. The organic will build a good soil from the bottom up. So you'll have more humus production, more production of humic and fulvic acids, more available cations, and rich soil, and more productivity. And so this is where there are paramagnetic components like oxygen. And then we have our magnesium, manganese, and our trace minerals, and all these components, and calcium, and a lot of the trace minerals and alkali metals are paramagnetic. And so, now you understand living things are diamagnetic. So broken down stuff where you have available cations increases paramagnetic value. So personally, when I do gardening, I use insect frass from my soldier fly bin and worm castings from my worm bin. So basically that is how I make my garden grow like crazy because I've used rock dust, but I take the rock dust and I add it with some kind of hot biodynamic soil and I keep adding it. I'll add pond algae or kelp that I get freshly compared to using like a miracle grow fertilizer. I will use a variety of things. Now, what you gotta have is soil bacteria that can produce higher paramagnetic values because no two soils are gonna have the same paramagnetic value with the same amount of rock dust. It all depends on your bacteria and if the rocks are being processed. And so if you use basalt dust, you're gonna have some of these alkali earth elements that'll start to become released in the soil and they'll create like an igneous soil medium. And so in theory, you know, you would think that the igneous soil is highly paramagnetic. Not always, because it depends on if it's a mophic or felsic rock. If you have more felsic rocks with silicon and potassium, you may have more of an orchard soil. If you have more mophic components, you might want to grow vegetables in it. And, you know, this is where volcanic ingredients can have all kinds of effects. You can have strong, very alkaline soil with the alkali earth elements from basaltic, deposits and then the sulfur can bring down the pH2 and rheolitic and zeolitic and granitic soils tend to be more acid and you get more volatiles and rheolite so rheolite or pumice is really one of the good things to do now if you want to build a biodynamic soil you might want to add some basalt dust and vermiculite and crushed lava rock and those are good components now perlite is trash perlite is cardboard junk that does nothing except aeration so it's you know a good thing to mix a bunch of things together and so when it comes to a soil medium you want a little of everything in your soil to build a good medium and once you have a little of everything your soil will grow like a charm so this is one of those things when we look at our paramagnetic values in soil it all depends on nutrient cycling and it depends on your earthworm activity and the history of the soil and what's broken down into the soil because two black soils can be totally different in nutrients and you've got to look at your history of soil and what's broken down in there. And that way you know what kind of rock dust to use. Because some of the rock dust will neutralize the pH. Some of them will bring up the pH. Some will bring it down. Some will provide different ingredients. And what you want to do with rock dust is kind of mix them all together and add them. So that way things can grow like a charm. And I hope this video helps.